back to Prime Time News. And if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com, thanks for joining us. We begin with a Prime Time News exclusive. An 18-year-old member of the Pathways International Ministries recalls how he was shot and injured as he attempted to leave the church on that fateful night on October 17. Kirk Wright has the details. The young man who was still visibly shaken when we saw him says he remains in shock and disbelief. He did not want to show his face, but tells us Pastor Kevin Smith, who is now dead, had him and the other church members under a spell. On the night in question, he says Smith posted on his Facebook page that a tsunami was approaching and that all members should pack up and come to the ark, a reference to the church. The young man said he went to the church because he believed the pastor that the tsunami would kill everyone outside. He says inside, Smith became angry and began acting as if he was tormented. He started a couple of things, there was mush, there was mush of the wine, there was money, mush of cheery, mush of everything, mm -hmm. mush of glass, and I cut up yourself and I ball out in the church. And I said, oh, what is this, man? I only have a chance to run out there and serve me like God now. I mean, you think I'm into mine now, isn't it? Then I walk and I cuss and I walk and I say, people turn it, turn them back on him, man. In coming the flesh and in the realizing, man, all the time. That's God. In the realizing. So we do it for the ground and he walk and I, you see me? Come out, something, you know, walk out. The young man says, in spite of all that, he still saw Smith as a god and never lost respect for him. He says at this time, about nine members were inside, while others were outside, clamoring to get inside the church. At one point inside the church, the young man recalled that the pastor gave instructions to a church member to kill another, saying he would bring him back to life. The member was stabbed in the back, and immediately after, the young man says Smith followed up by shooting him. The young man says a few minutes later, he saw the member that Smith had just shot back inside the church, begging him for help. So, Mr. Corey, Mr. Corey, I walk and I say, Your Majesty, I'm, I got shot. Can you heal the pain? He recalled another bizarre act by Pastor Smith, which led to the death of a man who had come to the church for healing. He says the man was sick and had some tubes in his chest. So he passed and looked for him and said, Yo, do you believe that I am God? And the man said, Yes, I believe. Do you believe that I can resurrect you when you die? And the man said, Yes, so he passed and said, All right. Pull out the chest to what I'm on him. The man started bleeding out on him. When the man started reading out, the man took off his shirt, took off his pants, and, and Andre, and the oh, next man, you know his name. So I can't know people do this, I mean, put him on the ground and let him bleed out. That man, you see, by the ground with black. Uh, black man, black, slim, and black. He bleed out on the ground, man. And he passed out, and he must die. And I raised, they call it resurrection. They call it resurrection. Resurrection. Resurrection, you understand? Following that, the young man says Smith gave him and another member knives, saying he was going to begin allowing the other members inside and that they should be killed. It was then, he says, Smith called Tanika, the late employee of appliance traders inside the church, and started questioning her. And the pastor said, do you believe that I am God in the And he said, she said, yes. And then the pastor said, do you believe that I can resurrect you again and you die? And the pastor said, yes, isn't it? And then the pastor said to Andre, saying, go on, kill her. And he said, get the mud, small, you know, then I'm dead. Run for your life. And I'm going to mind you. Because the minute he said, oh, Lord, maybe that's it. Saints might have gone kill me. He said, mm -hmm. tell us here sometimes I'm foolish. Bro. What did she do mm -hmm. after the pastor said that? Did she put up any resistance or she stood there no. waiting to be killed? She will have run. She will have run and start bawling. And I said, God, you are God. I said, tell the man, say, my God, you are God, you are God. You say, I need one for the need, and the man just go, I run up, just go, I cut it. You see, man, I cut you, man, show him. He said, you know, I'm really disappointed. The yeah, woman, the man just came in front of me, I want me to look at me and say, yo, no, man. It's serious, because I tell me a priest, I go tap him. 
But if you talk to me, I'm get shot or, isn't it? He says that sometime after five in the evening, members of the security forces arrived, but it took some time before they stormed the church. The young man said the police woman, who is a member of the church, was kneeling beside Smith, who then gave her instructions to take on members of the security forces who were outside. And tell her, I say, yo, go on, go on, police, then give you power, you can't then go on. Say, police woman, get up. Guy, but in the police man, or a robe, you know, when a female of them put on your bar. So she feel mighty, you know, like, so she can't then. Say, police man, walk like a robe with a girl. But you know what, you go for that, no shot at all. You turn up. One side, so you know. Then he says, Smith instructed another member of the church who lived at Smith's house to take up a knife and attack the police and soldiers. The pastor tell him, say, go. No, shot can kill you. You cannot die. You are immortal. Go and fight. You can take up a knife, knife some man, like, you know, a rumble knife. Mm -hmm. Take up a knife and run out for a soldier and police. You are shot for your man, what man? In past dead man, about 15 shot in it. The young man says he was shot while trying to flee the church compound in fear of his life. He says he ran towards the police in the dark who believed he was trying to attack him and was shot. He's refuting claims that they were all naked when the security forces stormed the church. He did say that the pastor gave her an instruction for them to take up their clothing and adorn themselves in white material. He said that did happen, but that they were always wearing their undergarment. Kirk right here in Montego Bay for TVJ News. All right, guys. All right, guys. Welcome, 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 welcome to the live. Me just play that a while ago for just kind of set the tone as to what we will be discussing tonight. Welcome, welcome everyone. Let me come on screen for you. I was just about to, um, I, I was just sharing this. Guys, please may I ask, you know, just go ahead and share this live um, link right now. Let me see if I can um, pin this. Okay, let me pin this comment. Big respect and welcome. Roll call, roll call, roll call, roll call, roll call. An exclusive. part of uh no this twenty twenty she'll be telling us her experience her story so tag who no one tag call over who no one call over because tonight we are going to dissect it was it an attempt to kidnap this family so that they could be used as, you know, um, human sacrifices because this thing's sticky, you know. Even Renito Adams came out and had his two cents. Renito Adams says that we're not supposed to be surprised. It's not only Kevin Smith alone in Jamaica doing this. So, but when labor rights go in a power, the crime rates are high. Something is into something. Go ahead. Emo, tag Mr. Vegas the film. Let me see if we can tag him in it. Um, see if we can find him. Thank you guys so much. Roll call. Anthony Mark, I see you in the building. Maurice, I see you. Emo Tep, Natalie, welcome, welcome, my sister Marshall Wagwan. See you in the building. Of course, as usual, Missy. Big respect, of course, you don't know. Thank you so much. Summer, I see you in the building. I see Sabrina watching, standing by, of course, in the wings as well to join us in just a moment. But guys, you've heard it. That report that you just saw a while ago, isn't it crazy? The man pretty much have them so hypnotized to the point where the man tell him, say, my God, and they believe it. No ballistics, uh, you know, um, I think examination and, of course, tests have been carried out on the police woman's weapon. The woman who come from Mobino. The police woman is actually from Kingston, I think, and she took a public transportation or a chartered bus, rather, which is the same thing, yeah, to Montego Bay and spent apparently two...
Yeah. So you have to see with them. For sure. For sure. Right. It's been it's right, been a norm so, in the culture yeah. of Jamaica I just, for, I just, for these I just, things just, to happen and people just accept it. Right. And let's, yeah. let's clarify one thing because I'm trying to ex All right guys. So I just had I just had I just had I just had some technical issues, but I started out and we're back again. We're back again. We're back again. So yeah, I know guys, I apologize for that. I, I I apologize for that. I apologize. So that 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 interview was of a lady who claimed that she know Kevin Smith. She grew up with Kevin Smith. And the puzzling thing is she never hear about Kevin Smith's um arrest. And that's the puzzling thing about it. Somehow I'm having internet problems. Never usually have no problems, but once we start talking about this whole brother, but my, my block that because I'm well protected. So, guys, thank you so much. But anyhow, tonight I'm going to be talking to Sabrina because Sabrina, you know, came public uh, last year when she visited Jamaica with her family and wanted to have the, um, the vacation of her dream. Dream vacation. Sun and sand and coconut water and everything should be good. But somehow she met this pastor man. And all of a sudden, her vacation, her family vacation, just went south. So she's here tonight to tell you in depth what happened. Because she has been making several posts on Facebook. And in fact, the story has been resurrected since this whole story came out of Montego Bay. A lot of Jamaicans were bashing her. I know that. Because at one point, she was reluctant to even come back to the island. But now she gets to understand that it's not Jamaica. And it's not necessarily every Jamaican is like that. When you have somebody who is cooking for you and taking care of you for the few days that you're spending in Jamaica and then having to confront them about stealing your money, it must be upsetting. And someone who came under the guise of being a man of God and then, and then, Locking you in the house and chaining the gates? How did they escape? That's the question. How did the police assist them? What happened? What really went down? We have Sabrina in the building tonight, guys. Anyhow, update. Them can't find the man, buddy. <laughs> it's the third day. It's the third day. Can you believe it? Them claim say them can't find the man Buddy, me no, me no, me really not understand what I got, people. It's all over the cleaner, guys. It's all over the cleaner. Lawyer says, tell us where Smith's body is. Valerie Nita Robertson, the attorney at law representing the estate of controversial pastor Kevin O. Smith, says she and his family have not been told where his body is being held. The lawyer told the Glean on Wednesday that the police and the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution, ODPP, have not been forthcoming with any information concerning the now deceased client. So people, did this man resurrect? Was there a resurrection? Because I'm sure it is plastered all over social media where they're housing this man. Which dedos, which morgue has his body? So I don't know. What's up with this um, lady? I don't know. People, people are questioning like, what's really going on with her? It look like him raised. It look like the man body missing. Nothing can go so. The police woman who was his bodyguard wear fear uniform and the soldier captain both took Mr. Smith to the church on the Sunday when all of this happened wearing their uniforms. Come out and open door. If you let out the big man. So, I, 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 this is crazy, guys. This is absolutely, this is absolutely crazy. Me can't believe this. And as people said, this is a Netflix series. And the story is only going to get better. Yes, Debisha. Based on information that I got, he's at Robert's funeral home. Yes, Natalie, look like him raised. Let me do a roll call because I know people log in when we're not big up yet. 
David, big up yourself. Claudette, big up yourself. I see you in the building. David, big up yourself. Genie Sweetness, what's up? See you in the building as well. You don't know Marshall. Thank you so much. Carla, what's up, my sister? Thank you so much. Uh, Del Marine, thank you so much. Natalie, thank you so much for tubing, uh, tuning in, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mark Anthony, share the link, share the live because we have an exclusive interview. We're also coming live on Hype TV in Jamaica and across the Caribbean. Yes, that show ya is streaming right now, currently across the Caribbean and also in Jamaica and across the world via Metaverse because YouTube, well, 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 well sorry, Facebook is Facebook, but the parent company is no longer Facebook. It is now Metaverse. So the big man changed the name of the parent company. You know what I mean? So tonight we're going to talk luxury Barbie doll. Big respect and thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Share this, share this, share this, share this. Emo, I see in the building. Natalie, what's up? You don't know, you know, we say roll call in and give everybody them shout out. Shaquille, thank you for accommodating me. Thank you so much, guys. All right, cool. So tonight we're going to be talking to the tourist who came to Jamaica with her family, expecting to have the time of her life. But guess what? Mr. Smith. Like he always does. Put a damper. Come with him bossy thing. We're going to find out more about that. But anyhow, tonight it's all about updating you as to what's happening. I don't know what's going on. Can I tell you all of this though? I'm starting to wonder if this is a natural accident or it just so coincidentally happened that it's an accident. Natalie Blair, big respect and thank you for tuning in. I don't know. Because this look a little bit fishy to me. And I've been questioning this from, I think, um, Monday night when I, I, I carried the live. I'm questioning, I'm questioning whether or not this is an actual accident. Because, you know, an accident happened that nobody's at fault. It's just a mistake happened. Misjudgment happened. People can't maneuver the car after they get out of control. But I'm starting to wonder if this is really an accident. What's behind it? Because here we are now. We can't find the man's body. And you remember that brother the way they do? The interview, the eyewitness who claimed that he was trying to rescue the police officers and Mr. Smith. You remember he said that when he touched Mr. Smith to see if there's any pulse, something came over him and his head swelled big and him start feel different. People, I'm going to say it. If that man ever get crazy or dead, I now call it upon him. I'm just saying. I'm not superstitious. I'm just saying to the rate of this man here move. I wouldn't be surprised if this man start a church. I wouldn't be surprised if this man is not yet a Christian, become a Christian, and all of a sudden start in church. I not say I'm going to be called and cut people short, but hmm, could Kevin jump into that man? That was just a little joke, though. Well, I'm saying it, you know. I'm saying it, you know. I'm say, Karen, Eli. Karen, Eli. Karen, Eli. Eli, Eli, Sheli, or Eli, or whatever, how you pronounce that name. I don't want to, you know, butcher your last name. But the attorney says that she who represents his estate and his family, they don't know where Mr. Smith's corpse is. They don't know the, 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 the DPP or whoever and, 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 and the government is not telling them nothing. They don't know where the body is. So people were joking about it being the third day and him rise out of the grave because Mary got to go roll with the stone. I wonder who played Mary. I wonder who rolled the stone away. I wonder who did that. Well, me now come here and call her that, you know. You know what I mean? I am not going to come here and call her that. So guys, who can do it? Y'all can do it. So, guys, I don't know what's happening. All right. So, I look like we're getting ready for our guest for tonight. Our guest for tonight is in the building, and we're getting ready for her because she's here to tell her story because a lot of Jamaicans came at her when she made the post. A lot of Jamaicans didn't believe her. But now she can lift to say, see, I told you so. Was it an attempted kidnapping to use the people and pick me, to use the story's family? as human sacrifice i don't know i'm just asking these questions you put the one and two together because even after what happened a few well just a sunday ago or two sundays ago you decide 
You decide. You decide. So tonight, I have her in the building. Guys, please help me welcome our very special guest for tonight, Sabrina. Sabrina, good night and welcome. Hi. <laughs> Are you hearing me? I can hear you. Well, I'm not hearing you. Oh, you can't hear me at all? Open your mic. No, I'm no, I'm not hearing you. I'm hearing you loud on here earlier. Kevin Spirit now in tonight, you know. Spirit is not going to win tonight. Okay, it's on. Kevin Spirit Let's is see. not going to win tonight. So I don't know. Maybe your mic is muted or something. Mm, um no, not. You know, I'm not sure what's going on. I'm not hearing you though. Okay, let me log out and come back. You want me to do that? All right, so oh. log out and log back in. That will give them enough time to share the live, guys. So she's logging out and she's logging back in. But make we go and raise the fair a little bit. Run over to the comment section to see what the what our VVL family members are saying. Um, let me see what Anthony's saying because I like, I like, I like when we interact. You know, I like when we interact. Ah, ah, ah. All right, I like that. Anthony's saying they have to wait until the body is released to the public. The lawyer is not privy to any special info. His lawyer is just doing her job. No need to hate on her. Um, well, you see, because me no liar, me no know, you know. I, I, I really don't know. I really don't know, brother. But it would, it come off a little fishy to me. As in, why wouldn't they tell her where the body is? Even so, she must, she must can, you know, at least be told where the body is. That's just my opinion. Um, Georgia Edwards says, why she want to know? She's not getting the chance to tamper with it. Can't trust them lawyer. Georgia, I mean, I don't know what she would want to tamper. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I really can't understand, you know, that comment. But I, I, I understand and I respect your opinion. When I say I can't understand the meaning that what is there to tamper with, I don't know. Sabrina, are you hearing me now? I'm here. I can hear you. <laughs> Okay, all right, cool. I'm hearing you now. All right, cool. Okay, Loud and clear. Okay. All right, cool. I'm just have to turn down my house speaker. All right, guys. So we have Sabrina live in the house. And um I I I was just talking to our viewers. Georgie, uh, thank you for your comment. Anthony, thank you for your comment. All right, cool. So Madam Sabrina, how are you tonight? How are you feeling? I'm great. I'm great. Thanks for asking. Okay, cool. And I'm, and I'm doing great. So we are here to, to actually, you know, dissect your story and to listen to your story once again. I know that a lot of people have seen it. A lot of people have seen the video. But just for this exclusive interview on Hype TV and also on Facebook, you're being broadcast across the Caribbean and, of course, via, you know, Facebook globally. And we have a wonderful family here. And guys, please, we're asking you to be respectful because I know that when she just broke the story last year, a lot of, you know, Jamaicans were coming at her because, you know, as Jamaicans, we tend to defend each other and at the time i think most of the persons that were attacking you i can probably safely say that they were supporters of mr smith and not necessarily the you know jamaicans you know who possibly. didn't know him possibly i i i i am going to run with it and say you know majority <laughs> of those who attack you you know okay all right cool georgia i get it the evidence i get it i get it i get it i get it and thank you for your comments all right so take me through the story let's talk about it february 2020 y'all jumped on the plane Le uh, left california headed to jamaica right. thinking you're going to have the time of your life Absolutely. now after getting off the plane after landing in montego bay <laughs> let's talk about it what happened we went to an airbnb that we had rented two months in advance um from a woman named Mrs. C and we, you know, there's an extensive process, you know, you have to send in information on each guest, how many guests are there. We had a small baby that was coming. So we had a lot of communication with the owner of the house. And, you know, so we get there and we're, we go to the house and we find out that the actual owner isn't present in Jamaica. She was in New York. We didn't know that at the time. It was a little disappointing because she was so nice. We really wanted to meet her. So we get there and we're greeted by a maid uh, slash cook and another young man. And they let us in. And we also had a driver. So that they were there. We went in. We love the house because, you know, sometimes the house may be shown one way on the 
the website and it's not quite as beautiful, but it was a beautiful house, beautiful, large, enough room for us. We had a lot of children with us, but we were, we were really, really happy with the house. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we get there and then, you know, we don't know anything about Jamaica. So we were asking like, okay, so what do we do for groceries? How do, how does this work? We were asking the maid or the, or the cook and, she said, okay, well, just give us $360 for groceries and that'll be enough to buy the things you want. She asked, well, we want it. We want a curry go. We wanted some stew chicken or whatever, you know, some mackerel. All right, hold and on, hold on, hold on. How many days did you guys um book the Airbnb for? Six. Six, six days. Mm -hmm. And this, this, this money that she told you would be enough to cover you guys for the six days? Yes, she did. She said it would be enough based on what we wanted. $360 to buy groceries mm -hmm. for six days. Okay, continue. Mm -hmm. So that was fine. We had no problem with that whatsoever. We gave her the money. And, you know, then we went on about Jamaica the first day. I don't remember what excursion we did, but we went somewhere. The driver was wonderful. He took us everywhere. He waited for us everywhere. He was just perfect. You know, he didn't leave us. You know, So we felt really comfortable. So on the first day, first of the second day, to be honest, I can't remember, we came back. And there was a black BMW in the driveway and a whole lot of people, just a whole lot of men. And someone said to me, hey, um, this is, he had a bunch of titles, to be honest. Kevin, Crown Bishop, Your Excellency, Doctor, Pastor, he wants to meet you. So I go out and I actually sit in the car with him. And he starts talking to me and he says, you know, I... I own this property. I wanted to come and see who is in my property because I didn't know anybody was in my property. And I'm like, um, we rented this off Airbnb from Mrs. C. And, you know, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Sabrina. We, we, I deliberately told her not to mention people's real names okay. because, I mean, it's all, it's plastered already all over social media. But I, I, I asked her, so when I hear she say Mrs. C, that's actually code name. For the person's, right. you know, or the subject that she'll be talking about. Right, right, right. So hold on. So let me get it. So you rented this from the previous owner on Airbnb. Yes. You spoke to the previous owner. Then yes. a day or two in your vacation, somebody came and said that his excellency wants to meet you. To yes. your surprise, you don't know who this mixed excellency. Had no Mr. Idea. Excellency or his excellency or bishop or whatever it is. At all, and they were already on the property. They weren't outside the gate. They were on the property. So I go out and, you know, I'm listening to his story and he starts to show me all of this communication in his phone between him and Mrs. C, the previous owner, and talking about the sale of the property and that he bought it for us and for her, from her and the things that were going wrong. Just a whole bunch of information that really didn't concern me whatsoever. But I just listened in and then he started to talk negatively about the previous owner and, you know, a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't need to hear, but I listened and he went on to tell me that he was of royal blood and he was the youngest pastor in Jamaica and he was your, how he got his title of your excellency because of what royalty, the, the lineage, you know, he wanted to talk about all that. And then he says, you know, my lawyer told me that I should throw you guys out. And I said, well, I don't know a lawyer in the world that would tell you after we rented this fair and square off the um, Airbnb website, we paid $2,300 for this place and another $960 for a driver. I don't know a lawyer in the world that would tell you that you should throw us out. But he persisted like, yeah, you know, my lawyer said I should throw you out, but I'm, I'm Bishop Kevin you know, of whoever. So I, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let you stay. And he kind of made me feel like that we were now at his mercy. You know, this was my trip. I planned this trip. So I kind of felt responsible for everybody. I was responsible for everybody. So at this time, I remember feeling like I had to be extra nice, like, okay, well, thank you, Mr. Um, Bishop. Bishop, you know, is what we called it. Thank you, Mr. Bishop, for letting us stay. This, that, and the other. Even though I thought it was a little unusual, but I still was like, okay, you know, thank you so much. You know, we leave on the 26th anyway. And, you know, we had just gotten there. It was, it, it, it was 
couldn't have been more than the 22nd because it was the first or the second day that he showed up. So I go on and he kept asking me, well, who's here? Who's here? So I actually started escorting each one of my friends and their children outside to meet him. And, you know, there were my friends. She had twin 11 year olds. Another friend of mine, she had a 21 year old. And and my daughter was 25. My eight month old grandson, my seven year old daughter. So I brought, literally brought everybody outside to meet him. Now, there were a whole lot of other people on the property too, all male. And at this time, the maid was or the cook, the one that took the money. He asked me, he said, how much money did you give her? And I said, three hundred and sixty dollars. And he said, well, she told us that you only gave her eighty dollars. I said, that's a lot. That's All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Before you get into that, let us mm-hmm. kind of go back a little bit. Okay. When Kevin Smith came to the property and spoke with you, saying mm-hmm. that he's the owner, mm-hmm. didn't you contact Mr. C? The, the fact did. that you rented it, what happened when you contacted I, her? Absolutely. What was her response? I communicated her, with her for everything. I, um, She said she showed me documentation from her lawyer showing that there was a sale to the property, but he was not to take possession of the property, meaning the sale wasn't final or however that works until the 27th. So if we were her last tenants that she was able to rent, while she still owned the property, then it was perfect timing. You know, from according to the letter that I got from her lawyer, he was not even supposed to be there on the 22nd. He was the one that was technically trespassing while he was saying that we were trespassing on his property and he should throw us out. So yeah, she was very nice. She was very apologetic. She also had um, talked briefly about how they had communicated and how it had been negative you know, and how, you know, he wasn't the best person in the world, but she was very kind. She was very loving. And so, so yeah. Uh, hold least- on, hold on, hold on. Let us, let, let us take a look at this. What we, we have on screen now is from their lawyer. It's from the previous mm-hmm. owner's lawyer, right? Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. they wrote to the Coral Gardens police station mm-hmm. because they had to send this letter to the police to, verify whether or not he was the owner during your stay or it would be after the stay so if you guys can see it i'm just going to see if i can quickly read it it says we act for and on behalf of and i you know kind of blocked out the um the vendor's name the vendors of the caption the property we enclose here with a copy of a uh, duty stamped agreement for sale. We received the sums representing the balance to close the caption to sale via check on February 18, 2020. The said checks, being US checks, were held by our bank for clearance as, in, as is the usual course. Therefore, the full payment for completion of the sale was received only today, February 25, 2020, being the date the sums cleared in our account. Today, is consequently the day that possession would rightly be granted to the purchaser, Mr. Kevin Smith. Copies of the checks are enclosed, and you may note that two of them are not manager's checks, and one is dated February 17, 2020. This clearly refutes Mr. Smith's assertion that we received all money and closed the sale on February 7, 2020. Notwithstanding this, the purchaser, Mr. Kevin Smith, bombarded his way onto said property on February 18, 2020, before the date of completion and without permission. We understand that Mr. Smith is now refusing to release the chattel and furniture from the property to our clients. So in other words, when he bombarded the premises, he was actually trespass, uh, trespassing according to what documents the lawyers sent to the police station. So yes. you weren't, so, so him trying to play as if he's doing you a favor. Right. It's just one of his con moves based on what I'm understanding. But we also can't really blame him though. I mean, in terms of, I think, I personally think that the previous owners should, should have came to your rescue, should have came to your defense, should have called him and asked him to leave the property because legally he wasn't entitled to the property title until after you guys would have checked out, which would be the 26th. 
So he would be the owner on the 27th because you guys would have checked out on the 26th, right? Am I correct? Yes. Yes. She did come to our rescue, though. She did. Every. Okay. I don't know if she contacted him directly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but everything that happened, I was in communication with her. Even mm -hmm. when the um, the cook stole the money, she forwarded mm -hmm. the three hundred and sixty dollars back to us. It was ev everything. So I don't know if she called him directly because I don't know if they had a relationship because they were going through a legal issue. But with us, she absolutely had our back. We were only able to get out of there and get into a new property because of her. All right. Before you get into all of that, what was the relationship like between you and the um the cook? Well, first, we loved her. We bonded immediately with her. As soon as, you know, the eight-month-old, my grandson, she, she embraced the baby. She helped us get a crib. So as soon as we got there, she was very nice. You know, we really instantly bond. You know, it seemed like their Jamaicans are... the my experience with the very positive ones that I saw were just really loving, just, you know, she was very loving and just kind of family, like, Oh, give me that baby. You know, he was crying and my daughter couldn't keep him from crying at the time. So she would just take the baby and bounce the baby, you know? So we really liked her. We, we mm -hmm. really liked her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I mean, so therefore it, 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 it was kind of disappointing to, you know, have her alleged stole y'all money. How did that happen? Well, Yes, it was very disappointing. As a matter of fact, it, it, it was very disappointing. It, you hear me, for those who have seen the video, I'm crying in the video. It, it hurt me because I really did think just right off that she was this great person. But what hap how that happened is because when he got onto the property that day, he, he brings it up and says to me, how much did you give her? Because she said you only gave her $80. And we were like, no, we gave her... Um, 380. We didn't even know there was a problem yet until he brought it to our attention. He said, well, and she was standing, they were, they were firing her that day. She, her bags were packed and we we're like, well, what's going on? And he was like, oh, she stole your money because she told us that, she, you know, she only gave us this, that, and the other. So I'm firing her, you know, so. Well, who the, said, who said, who said they're firing her? Mr. Excellency who, said that? Yes, he did fire her. So, so, so after he came and he actually had dialogue with you that night, and you would assume that the previous um, owner would contact him. Mm -hmm. Why was he even still allowed to be, you know, um, communicating with you and he even handling the daily runnings of the property? If he well, legally shouldn't be the owner until after you guys checked out. Right, so see, that's, that's the part that's really puzzling to me now. That's information we got after the fact. So at this moment, I'm believing him. I have no reason not to because not only is he on the property, he's mm -hmm. changing the locks and firing the staff. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason for me to question that that he's not really supposed to have access to this property. You know, when they come in Bogard and he's got six people with him and they changing the locks, firing the staff, you know, how would we have ever known? There's no way in that moment before I talked to Miss C that mm -hmm. I would have known to say, no, sir, you're not. The, you know, I wouldn't have known any of that. Right, 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 right. So, 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 so the staff that was there, Prior to Kevin's staff that he actually, you know, brought in after firing, were those employed by um, the previous owner or they were friends of Kevin as well? No, they were employed by the previous owner. So this lady, this lady who was your cook and, you know, the housekeeper, yes. she, 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 based on your recollection, she wasn't right. a member of his church. Absolutely not. Uh, 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 no, Miss C spoke of her during the communication of us renting the property. Mm -hmm. We knew her name before we ever got there. So mm -hmm. she mm -hmm. was an employee of Miss mm -hmm. C, the previous mm -hmm. owner, her mm -hmm. and the driver. Right. So, yeah. So the so I think you said that the driver was the only person that wasn't fired? He was not fired. There were some negative conversations between him and Mr. Smith. I don't really mm -hmm. know. I don't rem mm -hmm. remember what that was about, but I do remember they had a couple of actual arguments during that time. Something was going on that, you know, maybe it had to do with whatever um, they had going on during the sale of the property because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. the driver lived on the property. There's a tiny house like off to the left or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he lived there. Mm -hmm. So he was privy to 
whatever transpired before. And I remember specifically Mr. Smith speaking negatively about the driver and, and saying he was going to fire. By this time, we're like, no, no, no. We need a driver and we like him. And, you know, we kind of was like, no, no. And there was a time when he disappeared. The driver like left because we were supposed to go out to Margaritaville or somewhere that night. And we were calling because we thought he had gotten rid of the driver because he wasn't answering our calls for a minute. We're like crying actually, because at this point we had bonded and he was like all we had left. So we didn't feel safe. And we were like, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? So finally he shows up and we're literally crying. Like, you know, we thought you left us, you know, <laughs> you're, you're the only person we know out here now. So, so yeah. he was, so, so he was going in on everybody then. Absolutely. Yeah. But I mean, you know, and it took, I didn't, you know, now in hindsight, I'm connecting all the dots and remembering all that. But yeah, as a matter of fact, he was him and him and the driver had a problem with each other for some reason. You know, I don't know. All right. Who it was. All right. Let's go back to the day you met him and mm -hmm. he pretty much told you that he's the owner mm -hmm. and everything as of today will be run by him. Mm -hmm. What happened the next day? So the next day. We now, like I said, I kind of felt like I was in put in a position to where we kind of had to kiss his butt, really like, OK, Mr. Smith, whatever you say, Mr. Smith. You know, so I had a friend from Kingston who I hadn't seen in years. So we made contact and she was supposed to come meet us at the house. She knew we were coming and she came and she she was with us for a few days. He had a problem with that. I initially paid for 10 people to come to this house, but my uh, younger daughter, one of my youngest daughters didn't come. So there were only nine. So I could bring whoever I want. But when they found out that I had a native there from Kingston, they literally called my phone. He called my phone. He said, oh, no, no, your friend has to leave. Who is she? Why is she there? You know, just all in our business. You know, I'm saying, what does that have to do with you? It has anything to do with you. When I rented this property, I rented it for 10 people. You know, we only brought nine people. So therefore, if I brought my friend over to stay with us for a few days, so what? It's a gigantic mansion. Who, who cares? Anyways, um, so the next day, we just went on one of our excursions. I don't know. We had a great time in Jamaica. We went to Duns River Falls. We did everything. But it, I don't remember which excursion it was. But we come home and the air conditioner the air is off. Now, you know, that's ridiculous. We from California. So for the air to be off, already we're in an element that's hotter than what we're used to. So the air is off. So we notice it immediately. Like what's going on? The air is off. Da, 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 da. So I go and I find, find the guy because understand he had planted all of these young boys in the house. One was living in the garage. One was staying over in the place that the driver used to live in. You know, one was supposed to be the new cook. Mind you, he charged Hold on. Just we're trying to Understand this. So after firing the previous staff, yes, he brought his own people in. His own staff. Have them living there? Yes. Yes. They were living there. So much so that, you know, we had small kids. So one day we're like, the kids want to watch cartoons in the living room. One of them is just sitting there, just on the couch, just chilling. Like, you know, and that's when I started. Lounging? Like, yes. What if the workers just lounging? In just lounging in the living room. And we're like, okay, they're invading our space. This is, you know, it was one thing for them to be in the garage. The garage had a bed in it and a little place that looked like somebody actually normally did live in the garage, you know? So that's one thing for you to be in the garage. There's another thing for you to be in the living room with us. That's ridiculous. <laughs> so we started to get annoyed by that. And um, so the next day we go to another excursion and we come home and the water is off. We hot, we sweaty, we want to take showers, and the hot water is off, right? So I go and find the guy that's in the garage, and I say, excuse me, you know, what's going on? What, what is the problem? I mean, yesterday the air's off, today's the water off. So what they said to me, when I started, now I'm irritated. Now I'm going to a couple of them, and I'm saying, you know what? I put them outside, and I said, you know what? I'm starting to feel like you're mistreating my family. Well, why would you cut the air off? Why would you cut the water off? So they said, oh, it's because, um, because Bishop is coming into this new property he's just purchased. He doesn't want a high water bill and a high 
electric bill, whatever. So I contacted Miss C and she said, uh, all that's still in my name. All of the bills are still in my name. Nothing is in his name yet. So that's ridiculous. You know, so with that said, I don't know why they did that to us, to be honest. You know, why would you do that? You see babies in this house. Why would you cut the water off? Why would you cut the air off? It doesn't make any sense. You know, so um, after that, I started to complain a little bit more and tell her, you know, I I don't feel comfortable. When they started to complain about my friend who was a native of, of Kingston being there and, and basically told us we had to make her leave. And, and you know, I really wish I would have stood my ground on that because I really, I think having her there made them uncomfortable in hindsight. In hindsight, I'm like, why? Because I couldn't understand then. Why do they want her to leave? Why, why can't she be here? What is the problem? You know, but just looking back over it now, it makes sense why they wanted her gone. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm, so after mm -hmm. that, you know, I had, like mm -hmm. I said, I've been, I was in constant communication with the previous owner. So she said, you know what? This is not right. I'm going to move you guys. This is wrong. This man is evil. You know, um, I'm going to move you guys to a new house. It's not as lavish as this house. It's not as wonderful as this house. She immediately gave us a thousand dollars back. Okay. Well, she did not have to do. Now she already gave us $360 back that the maid stole. Now mm -hmm. she's giving us another thousand dollars, but just because she feels bad that this person is doing this to us. So, um, right, right. so, um, so was it, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stick a pin. Couldn't she have sent somebody to represent her? Because I know she was abroad, mm -hmm. but she allowed this man to pretty much just take advantage of you guys, even trespass on her property. Do as he pleased. Fire her staff, which I st I'm still puzzled. How did she allow that? And not only that, but start controlling the utilities. So was yeah. it a case where she had nobody in Jamaica whatsoever to come to physically be there to defend you guys? Well, she clearly had people in Jamaica because it is her friend, along with our driver, that moved us to the new house. So she did have friends and it was you know, she was able to get us into a new house and that person was able to come along with, with another car with our driver in order to get us. When you see us climb that fence, those two cars you see out there, one of those people is her friend that she sent. Yeah, but Sabrina, I'm just trying to understand like, 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 like why, why she allowed you guys to be uncomfortable after you guys booked the Airbnb through her paid okay your money to her why was she kissing up to this pastor was she a friend of the pastor was she a member of the church i mean did you ask these questions even I didn't. after i didn't because of her kindness and her assuming responsibility because mm -hmm. she could have easily just been like it's not my business or have nothing to do with me she's already been paid through airbnb she could have easily just threw her hands up and and turned her phone off she was she was gone she was in new york so she didn't have to keep she definitely didn't have to give us the money back that the maid stole she definitely didn't have to give us a thousand dollars back and she True. definitely didn't have to find us a new house because mm -hmm. had True. she not found us a new house we would have been stuck True. I so, am just feeding off of some of the comments coming no, in. No, no. I know a lot of people said that. Make no mm -hmm, mistake. Mm -hmm. People have said that. They said everybody, the driver, her, it was all one big unit. Everybody was a plan. So let me let me just say this. If if it was, there's some hell of a actors because the driver and the previous owner truly made us believe that they had our back, no matter what. And even if you know, it's been so much said about that. And I have to continuously say that because all I have is my perception of what happened then. And it the way it is, how would, what would we have done had she not relocated us? You know, right, so, right. You know, sometimes when people go on vacation, they might not have another thousand dollars or another two thousand dollars to go rent a new property, you know? Sure. Mm -hmm. and, and at this moment, we're, we're kind of scared. We don't feel like we could trust anybody. We don't know. You know, so to be honest, I, I felt really grateful. So if it was an act, it was a good act. That's all I can say. And I don't I just in my heart, I don't I don't feel that it was. So, yes, I everybody's like, oh, well, it's her fault because the Airbnb. Let me be clear. I don't believe this is, is even an Airbnb issue. This is not about Airbnb. This no. is about an evil person, because mm -hmm. this is the thing. 
even if her and him and there was some shenanigans going on with the sale of the property, which is very possible, right? Even if that's the case, even if she shouldn't have taken the, the last tenant because the dates were so close, even if that's the case, that doesn't make Mr. Smith the type of person that's capable of chaining women and children in a property or the type of person that's capable of giving the order to turn off the air condition and turn off the, you know, because according to him, the way he presented himself, he was super rich. He was of Royal blood. He was this, that, and the other. So if you, if I was super rich and somebody did, and this happened and I'm, I'm going to lose a few thousand dollars, then, oh, well, if I, at the very least, I'm going to sue the previous owner. I'm not going to chain women and children who had absolutely nothing to do with this. So to be honest, I'm, I truly, truly now do not believe what they did to us has anything to do with the sale of the property because right. he, he's a businessman. He knows mm -hmm. how to go after Airbnb if he needed to. You know, they already have right. legal paperwork between the two of them. So this, right. I don't, this doesn't, how do you suddenly turn into a, a person that's like, to hit babies, children, little kids, my seven-year-old. How do you turn into a person that's capable yeah, of yeah. I don't I don't believe that. I believe that um and make no mistake, uh when this happened, when I came home, I was afraid because I got I couldn't understand why everybody from Jamaica was so upset with me. I I you know <laughs> I didn't understand. And, and I don't believe he knew that I was a person in America that had a huge voice, you know. So when I pl plastered that video over a year ago, if, as you see now, it's everywhere. I went into all his forums everywhere and I posted and I tried to warn people. I, I contacted the Jamaican um, embassy. I contacted the consulate. Everybody, nobody responded. Nobody got back to me. Nobody cared then, you know. Period. And, and this is all I'm saying. And I want to be clear. What happened to these people recently and losing their lives? Of course, what happened to us in no way compares. I am very hurt. My heart goes out to the families of everybody that was harmed. But had they at least put up a red flag for what happened to us and at least had this man on their radar of, of being capable of, of even this behavior, maybe, just maybe he would not have gotten away with what happened now. You know, had they just cared enough to investigate? How do you not care? And, and the reason why I'm certain that they didn't care is because, as you see in the video, we went straight to the Coral Gardens Police Department directly. But before you get there, before you get there, let's go back to when you actually told them that mm -hmm. you want the water to cut back on. Mm -hmm. Did they immediately put back the water on for you? Immediately. As a matter of fact, I stood there and watched him. He went right over and pressed a button. It was, I, I don't know. They don't necessarily have buttons like that in America, but he went right over to the wall and pressed a, a button right next to the hot water heater and water, which means you did it on purpose. <laughs> you, so, <laughs> so he, he posted his boys on the property. <laughs> yes, he did. To watch you guys. Yep. He wanted to get rid of the Jamaican because then the Jamaican would have actually picked up. Mm -hmm. The Jamaican probably would have thrown a monkey wrench in their plans, whatever mm -hmm. plans they had. I believe that. If mm -hmm. they wanted to do something, because they might think that you guys are, you know, foreigners and don't understand how the daily runnings and how people operate in Jamaica. So they just wanted to get rid of every possible mm -hmm. uh, distraction or anybody that would, as I said, you know, you know, right. thwart their, 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 their attempts in terms of, you know, treating you guys like slaves or as i said possibly you know trying to kidnap you guys for human sacrifice based on what's going on now so let's talk about uh you and your family you you guys got real uncomfortable what was your next move after that after we actually okay so i went to miss well i had been communicating with the previous owner and we had made a decision mm -hmm. while we were out that day we made mm -hmm. a decision that she was going to move us. She said, you know what? I'm moving you guys. So we knew when we got home that we were leaving that day, right? But we went mm -hmm. on and finished our excursion, had a great day. And we go home and everybody, I tell everybody, pack now, pack your suitcase, go upstairs, just start packing. You know, there's so many of us, you know, we took, took time, got everything together, got the babies together, got everything together. So we packed, we rolled all of our suitcases down to the front door just set them right at the front door so after everybody's packed everybody's suitcases down i go into the garage where um one of them was there right the older one the one that he said was a police ex-police officer i'm not sure 
if that's true or not. But I go to him and I say, you know, I was very nice. I said, listen, we're not happy. We, we're, we're not comfortable here anymore. You know, we just don't, something's not right. So we're, we're just leaving. You know, we don't want any money back. You know, thank you guys for everything. You know, I was just being nice, you know. And, but we're leaving today. And now this man had been nice. He had been, um, he defended us. He had an argument with the maid right in front of us about our money, making us feel like he had our back. So he had been really nice and very kind of protective because, you know, he was presented to us as an ex-police officer. So I say, we're leaving. Thank you. We don't want the money back. He says, no. So, I'm, no, I'm like, no, no, we're leaving. We're, you know, we're leaving. So he said, no, just like that. He says, no, that's rude. He said, you're rude. You're, you didn't tell us you were leaving. You're not scheduled to leave until the 26th. So I, I'm like, so what are you talking about? We want to go now. We we don't want no money back. We don't want, because I kept thinking that was, what was it about? What, I don't care about the money. Can we, we need to leave. We're leaving. Thank you. Bye. He was like, nope. <laughs> like, just no. And I, so he said, he told you that y'all can't leave after y'all pack your bags and wanting to he said, no. check out? He said, you can't check out? You can't leave? No. I said, what are you talking about? I said, if I ran in a Mar Hilton Marriott and I paid for eight days and I decided to leave in six days, you, do they change? What are you talking about? Oh, well, I didn't say do you change because I know I was chained in yet. But I was like, do they tell me? No, what are you talking about? Right? So... I heard somebody, I've I really been racking my mind trying to remember who I heard, because he was calling Mr. Smith on the phone. But I heard somebody behind me say, he chained the gate, right? So I turned, ran out the garage, go down this driveway where Junior, oh, I mean, the driver and the other friend of Mrs. C were waiting with the van and the car to take us to the nuts because the plan was that we were leaving. Every, they knew we were leaving, meaning the, our, the two people on the outside of the gate. Now, apparently somebody, while we were packing, must have chained the gate because they were just still there with the cars on the outside of the gate. I don't know how they didn't see them chain the gate, but the gate was chained and they were standing on the outside of the gate. So I'm like, I go down there to him and I'm like, I just told him we were leaving and, and they said chain the gate and I noticed the chain is on the gate. So I'm like, what? Oh my God. You know, and I'm just like panicking, like what, what is going on? So I happened to see in that moment that there was a little part of the fence that was lower, that was lower than this big, you know, that we could get over. And as soon as I noticed it, I turn around, I run back up the driveway and I start screaming to my, my friends and my family and my kids. I said, let's go, let's go. We roll, start rolling the suitcases down, rolling suitcases down. And we're, I mean, it's just a panic. You see it in the video. We're just panicking. We're running. We got all the kids. We got to get the little eight month old baby over the fence. My 25 year old daughter who's pregnant at the time over the fence. My seven year old daughter who's pregnant at the time over the fence. My friend's 11 year old twins over the fence. You so that's what you see, all that chaos. Us trying to get get out, get out, get out, get out. So we do, we get over the fence, as you see, and I'm talking. You hear me saying, How could you? What what's wrong? Why would you follow a wrong man? Because Bishop was not on the property at the time. He just gave the order to chain the gate. You know, so I'm talking to the staff who are now kind of migrating down the driveway, and I'm saying, how could you follow a wrong man? How could you follow a wrong man? How could you let somebody tell you to chain us in this property? This is ridiculous. So that's what you hear when I'm going back and forth and I'm trying to check, make sure everybody's in the vans and I'm trying to make sure. So that's how we got out. We got out. We go. Um, I allow them to take the children to the new right, property. Hold on. Hold on. Let's let's not go there yet. Let's go okay. back a little bit. Let's let's okay. let's take it back. All right. <laughs> When you went to the 
whatever his name is, we just, I, I was just about to call his name, who was living in the, who was living, who was living right. in the, who was living in the garage. And he said to what? you, no, y'all can't leave. Y'all can't leave like that. Y'all are rude. Right. What was, what was, all right, as a matter of fact, let's jump to when you realized that the gates were chained. What was going through your mind? What were you thinking at that time? You know, my daughter jokingly says that I shifted into mama bear mode because it's just instantaneous. Like, oh my God. As soon as I realized he was serious, because understand, I kept asking him over and over again, like mulling, the, making the question in different forms to be sure. Like, wait a minute, you mean what? We can't. Uh, no, what are you talking about? So I really, I stood there and literally asked the question three or four times in three or four different ways to be sure. Once it was certain and I saw the change in his demeanor, that was the most disturbing to be honest. I have to be honest. He had not shown that demeanor at all. So like was, what? Like what? Like he was like... just changed. He was like, no, you're rude. You know, like what? I mean, he was very aggressive in that moment, you know, and, and we hadn't seen that part of him. And he was very quiet up until that point, other than the one time when we he was going back and forth with the maid over our money. But other mm -hmm. than that, he was nice. Good morning. Hi. Hey, you know. Did you ever think about them having plans to kidnap your family, kill your family, wanting to, you know, I mean... Well, Could this have been a case where because you were accusing the maid of for, for stealing your money? Could you know what I mean? I mean, really and truly, what was and, really going through your mind at that time? Initially, we didn't know. No, not. I mean, it's hard for you to even think that that was the plan. We have many times, of course, we were like, well, what were they going to do with us? What was the plan? What was you know? We really were like, were well, they going to try to force more money out of us? Which that that's not a a surefire plan for somebody because you know when people are finishing vacations maybe they've spent their last they might not there might not be no more money for you to get from us you know so we talked about that a lot like were they just gonna try to make us give them more money like a gunpoint or something mm -hmm. or you know what were what were they gonna do you know we've even you know, said uh were they gonna take the kids sell the kids you don't want to know what kind of thing? We, but we said that jokingly, I, to be honest. We didn't know. Once we were home and safe, we were just mulling over ideas of what was possible. But the mind of a good person doesn't make you think that that extreme. You're in you danger. Right? We, we yeah. would have never thought that <sighs> the worst, I'm telling you, the worst I thought was that they were going to put a gun to our head and make us give them more money. That's what I okay. believe. That's what I thought. Uh. So this whole sacrifice thing wasn't even... I, I didn't know that. That was <laughs> not at all. No. Wow. You see, how, I, you, I see, mm -hmm. you see how people are kidnapped and killed? And when people go missing, pretty much oblivious to what will happen or so. could have if, happened? If I thought that, if I had known that that kind of stuff was happening in Jamaica, I wouldn't have felt comfortable staying in the new house the, next, the last two days. You right, understand? Right. Mm -hmm. There's no way. If I mm -hmm. if that's where my mind was at, this I would and I'm I'm and not only that, I'm on video showing the new house. Remember right, in the, in the right. showing where we are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's no way. If I thought I was in that kind of danger, there's no way I would be videotaping the new house, letting everybody know where we are, mm -hmm. and I would not have stayed there. No matter how much it would have cost, we would have been out of there immediately. If I would have thought it was something, who first of all, who? thinks about human sacrifice that somebody is capable of that nobody who that's true i didn't know they was doing that mm -hmm. in the world mm -hmm. i just wanted to understand like yeah. you know what 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 kind of mind frame you were in at that yeah. time because you know jamaica oh you hear about crime oh as, as you said it might have been you know held at a gun held with a held right. up with a gun and to be like you know what pay us more money or right. give us some of your clothing that you brought from foreign or and the expensive name brand stuff you know what i mean i have indeed heard about the crime make no mistake i have heard about the crime but mm -hmm. the extent of the crime that i have heard about in jamaica is people getting killed people uh, people getting shot for money I've never in my life heard of human sacrifice or this type of stuff that's, that this man has done now. I never would have thought that. And, it, you know, I'm going to tell you, when I found out about it, it was just like, wow. I mean, can you imagine a year later, you know, because, of course, you know, I was forced to let this go because nobody did anything. Nobody cared. So we let it go. And that was that. And, of course, there was a degree of gratitude because I did feel like, you know, something wasn't right. And we had to kind of accept 
that we will never truly know what they were going to do with us. We had just threw our hands up to it. Nobody cares. Nobody wants to uh, do anything about it. And that was that. They haven't heard anything about it. Nobody ever emailed us back. Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. All right. Let's get to just, 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 just because I want to continue the story after you guys, you know, hopped over the fence and mm-hmm. got y'all, you know, luggage and all of that out. And then they actually, you, you actually trust a driver to transport your family with your grandkids okay. and your friend's kids to the next property. So I, I'm telling you, you're very strong and you're very brave. And I understand that you didn't even understand who you were dealing with at the particular time when all of this was going down. But let's talk about you guys being locked in the house. How did that happen? Because it's not only that he changed oh, the gate, yeah. but right. you guys were actually locked up in the house. You couldn't get out of the house. No, what so happened? Yeah. So th- throughout that week, as you see the video I sent you where I was trying, it was a Jamaican rainstorm that morning. And I get up early, so I was up super early. And I'm like, oh my God, it's a rainstorm. I'm trying to, I run to the front door. It's locked. I mean, I had no clue that it would be locked. I I immediately try to lock the door. You see on the video, I have to go get the guy. He he has the key. I even say to him in the video, like, was were we locked in here? You know, but even in that moment, they are so good at convincing you that this is customary in Jamaica, that, oh, that's what they do for your safety. We lock you in. And But if the house was on fire, how would we get out? If you got us chained in the front, chained in the back, I have to wake you up to get you to open the door. That I, 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 I understand safety, make no mistake, but also... If we are chained in, and if this is something you do, why didn't anyone tell us that? Why didn't you say, listen, we want you, we don't want you guys to be alarmed because if you get up and try to go outside, the door is locked. Why why wouldn't somebody say that? So so he so he changed the locks to the door and he didn't give you guys a key because Absolutely prior to that, not. y'all could go out and come back in and open the doors and all of that because the, the the when you guys rented the place from Miss C, the maid gave you guys keys to the apartment, right? To the house, right? At, you know what? We were never given a key. <laughs> so we how did never. you guys get back in? We, it, Somebody we was always there to let you guys in. I, I'm, tr- I'm trying to remember. All that, first of all, we were never given a key. I mean it at all. We were never given a key. But there was always a situation where if you go to the door, we, I mean, we get up in the morning, the the driver's here, everything's open, the the maid was there, so nothing was locked initially. You understand? I didn't know that it was locked, but we weren't given a key. Let's be clear. We were, when we came home, we would call, um, if we weren't, uh, somebody, we would call and they would open the gate or, we we did not have a key to that property. And now, and you just made me think of that because I realized we were never given a key. When we pulled up the day one, they never presented us with a key at all. Okay? So. Wow. So they locked I, you guys in the house. I no keys was given. No keys. keys were given on the day you guys checked in. Absolutely which, um, you know, some people would say, but come on, Sabrina, that should have, you know, raised the red well, flag for you. Absolutely. But, you know, see, the thing is, the way the house is ran, it was like the maid was here. The um somebody it, it's so many people on the property it it wasn't now, now in hindsight absolutely I'm like well that's ridiculous it is a red flag why we didn't get a key but the way it was was the maid was always there the cook was there the house boy was always there you know so the door was open when we came in and pulled up from each excursion the we just walked right in the doors weren't locked you know so I. I don't know. I, they did tell me that, okay, well, we lock you in at night for your safety. And as you see, one of the pictures you see, there's a lock on the back gate too, because I just wanted to kind of go out one day and go walking around the property and just, you know, get some air. That's the, so, uh, <laughs> you were, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing at it now because you guys are safe and thank mm-hmm. God, but it looks mm-hmm. as if you were in a, uh, a prison in Mobile. Mm-hmm. You probably in Kevin Smith's prison because there is yeah. absolutely you know, and, and, and I do question like although I was able to uh, react to certain red flags there were a whole lot I missed 
There were a whole lot of signs from the beginning that weren't right, but <laughs> they kept saying, this is That's what they did. And even nah, so nah. many people, if you notice on my video, in the comments, they're like, oh, well, you must never been to Jamaica. That's what they do in Jamaica, and, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, but it was a that's, lot of red flags on this. That's, that's crazy. All right. So after you hop over the fence and you got your family out and you feel a little safe now, then of course, naturally, you're going to go to the police to make a complaint. What happened when you got to the police station? Go to the police. Officer. I don't know. Can I mention his name? No. Just say okay. officer. officer <laughs> off the officer. <laughs> As you see in the video, he's calling. And first of all, they it, it took them a, us a minute to get them up like Hey, look, somebody just changed his Hello? They just was, like, not interested at first, like, at all. Like, what's going on? What do you need? You know, they just weren't interested at first. So I had to, like, kind of get a little, like, no, listen, let me tell you what happened. So finally, he calls the property, and he speaks to Mr. Smith. And as you hear him on the phone asking Mr. Smith, if he wants them to come there or if he wants, you know, as you see in that video, I had to keep feeding him like stuff to say, like ask him, did he chain us in the property? Cause he was trying to All say, right, oh, hold on, this. hold on. Let us, let us see if we can. Um, I'm not going to show his face. I don't want to show that, but what I'll do, I'll, I will, I will just play the video and we'll listen mm -hmm. to the audio because you have to be definitely kind of, um, you know, coaching him. On how to do his yeah. job. I mean, you're good, you're feeding him with the information, yes. But to me, it sounds as if he is actually giving Mr. Smith the lead. Right. He's like, okay, I'm a cop, but you're Mr. Smith. I'm going to ask you what you want to do. Guys, take a listen. All right, I'm not. All right, let me start that audio part out because I'm not hearing it. All right. But walk us through the conversation between the police officer and um, and Kevin. He was asking, well, the first Kevin started saying that we didn't pay. So immediately, of course, if you've ever written, rented an Airbnb, you know that you have to pay in advance before you can access the property. Before the date that you're supposed to arrive, everything has to be paid in advance. We paid $2,300. I had my daughter bring up those receipts right there because that was ridiculous to me, first of all, to even say that. But okay, thank God you said it. We got our receipts right here. Pull up our receipts. $2,300 we paid. Showed, showed that to the police officer. And he's just he's just saying different stuff. Like, they're, oh, they're not allowed on our property because the police officer... Hey. The police no, go officer, ahead. Continue. Sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. The police officer is asking him, okay, do you want me to come there or do you want to come down to the police station? You know, <laughs> so he says, oh, well, they're not allowed on my property or, you know, this, that, and the other. And, and that's All right. So let, me, let us try and see if we can hear, hear that. From the Paragon Police Station. All right. I am, I am of the knowledge that you recently purchased a home and there's some issue with, with some guests there now. Yeah, say again. They, they are checked out and they and they are supposed to check out when? Wednesday. Okay. All right. Where are you now? Ask him to be chained the gate. You're where? Yeah, the house. All right. You want us to come to you or you'll come to the station because they are here. Tell them which the huh? ask did you chain us in the house. They're here for what reason? They were chained inside the yard. They were locked, but with the, the gate was chained up with padlock and chain. It's locked in the night and in the day. We asked to leave. Oh, uh, no. All right. Um, all right. Because I'm not hearing you so clearly, I'd rather to speak to you in person, whether you come to the station or I'll leave. When when has it ever been where a police is doing an investigation and is giving a suspect because you're the complainant? Mm -hmm. When when can anybody tell me on the live if they've ever heard that before, where the police is giving you the opportunity to say, 
you got to come to us or if you want us to come to you or whatnot, wouldn't you then demand or ask or request him to come to the station because you want to write a report and he must come to give a report? Is it that this policeman knew exactly who he was talking to? Mm -hmm. you know, so that's that. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I didn't catch that then. You know, I didn't realize. Yeah, like why? Why? You know, but after the fact, it's like, yeah, why? Why would he? You know, look, we just said he chained us in this property. Let's go. <laughs> you know, let's go get him. So yeah, I, you sure will. I, 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 and there is something about it. All right, let me kind of back up just a little bit, guys, because this is getting interesting now. When, when me ever hear police are calling nobody and they pan, hey, um, sir, yes, we have a report here, and um, I would like to know if you'd like for us to come or would you like to come down to us? I've never heard that before. They were locked, but with the, the gate was chained up with padlock and chain. It's locked in the night and in the day. We asked to leave. Oh, uh, no. All right. Um, all right. All right. Even if it was locked in the day and even if it's locked in the night, why then his little boy, his little henchman, his little security guard, then is going to look at you guys and say, no, you guys can't leave. All right. Ridiculous. Anyhow, I'm getting too worked up over this. I, I, I shouldn't have played this part because this is the part that got me. I can understand that he came in and he tried to showboat and, you know, gave you his many titles and tried to bedazzle you. And I think at one point you said that he actually invited you guys for dinner or he came over for a dinner, had dinner with your family. He did. So he, he did. probably was using that opportunity to scope and to... Hmm. I believe that. And, you know, People when I think about that... Right? Huh? Viewers, viewers, want to see what going on. The man actually went to dinner with the family. So he came to the house. So what, what happened was, after the maid took the money, he told us, you know what? I know this wonderful cook. He is a five-star chef at some major hotel. And I'm going to get this cook for you. But y'all do have to give us an extra three hundred and sixty dollars, which we we did because we were at what were we going to? So hold on, he asked for another three sixty that the lady took from you guys. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> we gave him another three hundred. Six. Hold on. You know hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry, it's Sabrina. Sorry, six and three <laughs> is nine, right? Yes. <laughs> And for the people who are watching on the live who actually kind of pick up on where I'm going with it, six and three are nine. All right, continue. <laughs> so, which I did find unusual that he did ask us for the money because he all, he talked continuously about how rich he was, right? And if you're so rich and something, you see these people, you know, and this woman done did them wrong and stole their money. Why would you ask him for more money? So not only did he ask us for another $360, which we gave him because we didn't really have a choice because we didn't have no food, right? He said we had to pay this five-star chef $140 to come cook. So we don't have nobody to cook for us, so we didn't have a choice, right? And we I, we didn't have no food, so we we gave them three additional three hundred and sixty dollars and a hundred and forty dollars. Okay. Wow. Wow. And wow. I mean, we really. I was of the mindset. Let me be clear. I was of the mindset that I need to try to salvage the rest of this vacation and make sure that my friends and family are having a good time. So I'm one of those people, even if I kind of feel like you might be taking advantage of me financially, right, right. Just go get us a cook and get the food here so we can just eat and be enjoy then here, take it. So we did pay. We all put our money together and we paid that additional money. We did. All and right. Then, so and then let me just say this. And yeah, then go ahead. we love curry goat, right? We love curry goat. <laughs> I know. So they made us a big pot of curry goat with our money, of course, and our groceries. We come home from the excursion. We like, oh yeah, we're gonna eat the leftovers of curry goat. We can't wait to eat this curry goat. They ate it. The the house boys ate our food that we just paid twice for, basically. Can you believe that? 
So hold on, the five star chef that cooked the curry goat was given to you guys by Mr. Um, Smith. Right. And his boys ate mm -hmm. all the curry goat. Y'all well, didn't partake no, no, in the curry no, no. goat. We ate it the first night, understand? But it was a big pot left. Okay. So the next day, we were like, oh. well, we can't wait to get home to get the rest of the leftovers. You know? No, no. Foreigners don't eat overnight food. Foreigners don't eat what's left over. So well, they, well, they let they ate the food. Trust me. No, no. When I say foreigners, tourists, I'm referring to you guys as tourists. Y'all oh. don't. Yeah, them said them said them not come back for this man. This cook from yesterday. So you were actually feeding his boys as well. This is unbelievable for real. Carla, I agree with you. This is unbelievable. <laughs> so Kevin came, he ate. Yes. He, okay. His yes. boys ate. Yes. So you were actually feeding them for the couple yes. of days so that you were there. Oh, this is crazy. Let's be clear. The reason why he invited himself to dinner was because it was the because all of the nights it was not the five star chef. Some of the nights the little young boys was cooking. You know, it was not the same cook all the rest of the time. So Five Star Chef, I do remember him introducing himself as that one of those days. But who knows if that was even true. So because it was this amazing Five Star Chef, Kevin was like, you know, I'm going to come. His food is so delicious. I'm going to come have dinner with you guys. So we were like, OK, sure, whatever. We didn't, you know, at this point. He has a great way of making you feel like he has done something for you. Something like, great for you. I, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, my lawyer said I should throw y'all out, but I'm not going to show y'all out. And I'm going to get y'all this chef. Y'all going to have to pay me $140 for it, but I'm going to get y'all this great chef. So, And I'm going to come eat. So he did. He came and sat at the head of the table and ate. And at this point, we don't have any reason to not let, allow this because we're, we're, we're in a... Um, we're feeling grateful because he's made us believe that technically he could throw us out, but he he's choosing not to throw us out because he's such a wonderful man. You understand? I'm, so of course, when he invites himself to dinner, we there's no reason for us to say no. Excuse me, no, you can't come. We 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 feeling like we are really on his property. We don't because know. He, tra he pretty yeah. much trapped you as well. He manipulated you. Mm -hmm. He did straight up. Yeah. He did, and mm -hmm. I, I see people making comments and you have to understand that sometimes we will joke about certain things the goat he was sacrificing animals as well in his church so probably one of them goat that way you get that probably you know from one of those sacrificial um wow, you know offerings mm -hmm. and you know i personally feel like he probably was coming to you know scout the 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 the, the, the entire family to see you know which one could be because it is, it is a, 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 a gentleman revealed mm -hmm. to a popular website mm -hmm. that he was into trafficking young men. Right. I heard that. And I, I've said that in one of my videos. I, I didn't know if, if it had any validity to it. But the mm -hmm. reason why I know for a fact that there were young, there were a lot of people that contacted me via uh, YouTube or Facebook or whatever after the fact. And most of them were young men who complained about having been used and abused by Kevin claimed that, you know, he, he was having sex with them. He had used them. He had, you know, uh, so a lot of them, a whole lot, but let me be clear. There was nothing but young men around him escorting him. Even when the police came to the, and he walked down the driveway, to the, there were two young boys holding him, walking him down. Like he was the a Royal King to the police. So hold on. Two young men were flanking him. Af is that what it's called? <laughs> yeah, it's not, as in side oh, yeah. like like, like next to him. Mm -hmm. that, that's how they escorted him around. Absolutely, like I didn't know because to be honest, it kind of looks like he's. It, I didn't know if it was because he was handicapped or he couldn't walk by so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because you know, it kind of looks like like how you help your grandfather or somebody, you know. But yeah, on each side, they just hold him. So, yo, this is crazy. So the man came to dinner, sat at the mm -hmm. head of the table. He did. Then swindle another 360 US dollars out of you guys. And one for Then so his henchmen ate the leftovers. They did. Then turned the water off, the heat off, changed the locks on the door. Mm -hmm. This is a movie. Jamaicans are making, Jamaicans are going in about this. But guess what? I want to jump to the police. So the police actually bowed. The police gave in. The police said, okay, we will come to you, Mr. Excellence. Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. When they arrive at the house, what happened? 
And as a matter of fact, you said that when they were going to the house, you were a little bit skeptical because... Absolutely, because, okay, so we had sent the kids to the new house. So it was me and my friend. We get in mm -hmm. the back of the police car. So if I'm not mistaken, Coral Garden Police Station is kind of like at the bottom of, of Montego Bay, this hill, this iron shore. So I know they know where this house is. I know they know this address. They have to. They hit a corner down a dark street, no lights whatsoever. It was like an alley. And we jokingly, me and my friend in the backseat, like, where are y'all taking us? Y'all going to kill us? What is going on? I, to be honest, it scared the mess out of us. I mean, and understand, I remember saying that jokingly, though, kind of. We were kind of like taken aback because it felt like they didn't know where they were going to find this property. And we said to them jokingly, like, where y'all taking us in, in this dark screen? Y'all going to kill us? Ah, ha, ha. You know, laughing. But the truth of the matter is, it was a very scary situation. Hold on, and Sabrina. Hold on, hold on. The driver that usually, you know, take you guys around on the excursions and stuff, when they mm -hmm. were taking you guys or mm -hmm. he was taking you guys to the police station, he drove mm -hmm. a, a, a different route than what the police actually took to go back to the house. That's no. how you knew you guys were not going the, in the regular direction? No. So this raised a red flag for you? No, not the driver. Me and my friend, the driver in this moment was escorting the children to the new house. Our driver who had been- Well, get that. So, so the police, who brought you back to the house? The police? The police. And they we didn't drive the regular the way or direction or rope that you... I don't know the regular way, but all I know is they acted like they couldn't find it. You understand? They were like, what, where? They, they turned and went down this really, really dark, dark street, super dark, so much so that we had to say, what is going on? We can't even see nothing. Y'all gonna kill us? That's what we actually said, but we were playing. You know, it was scary, but we were joking. And sure enough, eventually they maneuvered out and maneuvered out and then they found it. But I find it very hard to believe that the people who govern this area, Ironshore, don't know where this house is. Either what way, happened we, when you get to the house? What happened when you get, get to the there house? And initially the guy, the very one that I went to to tell that I was leaving told me, no, he comes down and he starts talking to the police. And um, he's saying that we, Mr. Smith said that we cannot come on to the property, meaning me and my friend, because at this point it's just me and her. Now, Junior has by this time gotten all the kids to the house and he's, he's back. He, oh, I'm sorry. The driver, he's back. Our driver who we knew and felt comfortable, he was back. So it was just me, my friend, and, and driver and the two cops and they're at the gate so eventually i don't know um two people came down and escorted um mr smith down and we're talking to and we're standing outside yeah see we're all out on the outside of the gate so yeah see see the driver's right there he's with us so and there's a police car and they're at the gate right there they're talking initially they were not talking that's the gate we hopped over yeah um so eventually mr smith get, comes down and he's saying to the police i'll talk to you guys but i don't want them present meaning me and my friend that just hopped this fence the, the people he locked it he doesn't want us there so in the video you hear my friend saying well why would that be possible why do you yeah the guy in the lavender shirt that's the one who was in the garage the entire time. That's the one that said I couldn't leave in the, in the purple lavender shirt. Him. Yes, him. He is the one. Because Mr. Smith at the time. Now, and understand, Mr. Smith wasn't on the property when we left. But by the time we got back, the chain was off the gate, as you see. And Mr. Smith was present. So that raised a red flag. Like, why would you then remove the chains off the gate? Yeah, because they knew it was wrong. They knew and they didn't want the police to see the chains. <laughs> but they didn't know I had a video and a picture of the chain. See, they could have got away with saying, what chain? There was no chain. What are you talking about? Because if it was lawful, let's just be honest. If it was lawful and it wasn't wrong, why'd you take it off when the police, you knew the police was coming? 
that is still that is still puzzling to me so they knew exactly what they were doing that's why we are asking the question was this an attempted kidnapping for human sacrifice because how is it that when the cops came there now you remove the chain so what was their argument what was their reason for chaining you guys inside the yard they said you know how when you rent a hotel mm -hmm. and if there you leave your credit card for incidentals if you drink out the uh the, the mini bar. bar, you take a pillow, mm -hmm. then they just mm -hmm. charge your credit card. Mm -hmm. They were mm -hmm. like, "Oh, we didn't get a chance to to uh, inspect the property." <laughs> you know, let's just say we destroyed the house. You got my credit card, charge me. You don't chain me in the house. That's ridiculous. So that was one of the arguments that he was saying. And you know, at the time, this is the thing. Why you don't see any footage of me once they let us back in and we're standing there talking to him? And because he kept saying, "She's got to turn that camera off. You got to turn the camera off." You know. Mm -hmm. So you were let back in on the property. Just right, out, right in the gate, right in, at the end of the driveway. There's a little door over. They didn't open the big gate. There's a little door right over to the right, and we all walk right in there. Right? Oh, okay, okay. But I get it. Just, I get you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we stood right there at the mm -hmm. end of the driveway, and we talked. And he started talking. He started talking that nonsense. He started talking about the sale of the property and how he's the owner and this, that, and the other. And I kept saying, what does that have to do with you chaining us in the property? Because they really don't have anything to do with each other. You You understand? I am willing to accept and believe that there could have been some shenanigans going on with the sale of the property. That don't have nothing to do with right, changing right. us in this property. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he started talking about that so much so, over talking the police, you know. And at this point, I'm kind of, I'm not kind of outraged. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. What are you talking about? That had nothing to do with us. That had nothing to do with us. So the police, I guess they just got tired. I don't think. I guess they just got tired of hearing the back and forth and he just turns to me and he's like you know i don't think you guys have a case it's nothing it's, it's nothing um nothing unlawful it's not a crime just attempted kidnapping talking about it's not a crime to chain us in we the only reason why we out is because we have this fence what are you it's talking attempted about kidnapping though what is right. he talking about so, so that's what happened the the police kind of just gave up they just was like you got to so sue so hold on. Mm -hmm. So let's go back. The reason for chaining you guys in, mm -hmm. what they told the police was because they wanted to make sure that nothing in the house was damaged. And right. shooting kids to find anything damaged. Like, mm -hmm. for example, a missing remote. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Then they could have charged you guys for that. But how? We, what does it have to do with you guys being chained in? Right, you you have a credit card or a debit card on file. Why not contact Mrs. C and say, hey, listen, mm -hmm. it's so far boss, you know, and there's a, a hole punched in the wall, you know, and right. a pipe in the kitchen is broken, you know, and I have to bring my servicemen in to fix this. Hey, charge her card and reimburse right. me. Absolutely. Why Absolutely. do you need to chain people in? So he did talk about some remote being missing, right? That's what he told the cops, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, he did say that. He said... um, there's a remote. They stole the remote. The remote was missing. You you went to Jamaica, spent <laughs> almost four thousand dollars, not even <laughs> counting the plane ticket for everybody, and you want to steal a remote for a yes. TV? Yeah, it's just ridiculous. And was it made out of gold? The fact that he's Mr. Royalty was the remote yeah. made out of gold. And let's just say somebody accidentally packed the remote or something in the middle of us. Is that? Do you chain people in the in the? house because of that if they couldn't find a remote in that moment that's just ridiculous let's just say but that. they still didn't even come in to find the remote or look of look if anything is damaged or missing yet yeah. so that's why people are no, saying and, that and that's mr smith had know. something up his sleeve he had and something up his sleeve that's another thing somebody said let's just say it, their their story of wanting to inspect the property okay great time to do it the police are here let's all go in and inspect the property now so that's what you want to do right Right. Yeah. So that, I, I, that, remember when we first spoke, I said that to you as well. I said exactly, then. Yeah, that was you. Okay. The police is there, so why not go in now? Right. Mm -hmm. Walk through. Do a thorough walk through to make Absolutely. sure make that sure. all That's the it. I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and the V's are joined, so you get a W right there, and you just say, "Okay, cool, ma'am. Thank you so much. Have a great night." Right. Nothing was damaged. Mr. Smith Absolutely. had something up his sleeve. I, I, I mean, I won't well, catch trouble uh, for that. Come no on. Mistake. Now that. Mm -hmm. Now no, that I see what has happened, now that I see what has happened, 
I absolutely believe that we were in far more danger than we realized. I absolutely know that we are so, it is nothing but intuition. You know how they say, follow your intuition, you know, easily. I could have questioned my intuition that told us to get, get out of there and been like, oh, I'm overreacting. Oh, I'm tripping. It's not a big deal. No, I'm so glad that in that moment, I listened to my intuition because now here a year later, I realized that we were in the presence. We are sitting down at dinner. We were I'm sitting in the car talking to of somebody that is capable of what he has done now. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You know, Sabrina? so I, I absolutely give God all the credit for getting me out of there. That that you're wasn't lucky. that wasn't just my intuition. That was God. You're lucky. You guys are you 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 guys are lucky. We are truly we we are truly blessed. I, I, and I know that. Let's just be clear. I, I there is no doubt in my mind now. I, not only do I know that, I believe it was in God's intention for me to know this now. You understand? To, because, like I said, I was harassed so much. I was called a liar. Oh, you overreacted. Oh, you this. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, mm -hmm. you were ruining Jamaica's tourism. Mm -hmm. You know, all mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, my life was threatened. People said if mm -hmm. I come back to Jamaica, they would kill me. All behind this. Wow. Really? All behind. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. And the maid, the maid, the, the cook, Miss D., was one of the main people on the way to the airport through my WhatsApp. She was just cussing me out, calling me all kind of horrible. And then, you know, the one that I said we thought was so amazing, the one we thought was so kind, the very one that stole our money. Now, this is the thing. Let's just say, and, and let's just say you stole the money. You, 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 it's a hard times. You stole the money. How do you then become a person that is now harassing me and calling me names? How are you not saying, you know what? I'm sorry. Times was hard. I needed the extra money. I should have done on. that. I mean, she's not going to well, okay, she's but going to, if she took the money, she's it. not going to admit it. No. But even she's if going you to. don't admit it, how are you then harassing me? How are you then calling me every name in the book like I did something to you? I don't understand that, the mindset of that because let's just, if you're a good person, you seem like a good person, I'm a good person. If we ever really do wrong, you, you feel that conviction. You're like, man, I got to make this right. I, you're not going to take some money of a family who liked you and then harass them all the way to the airport. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's ridiculous. Who does that? I mean, it's just it's just try, trying to deflect the guilt. Mm. That's what guilty, you know, people usually do. They tend to, you know, deflect it and like, oh, I, 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 I'm. I am proving I'm, I'm trying to show you that I'm not guilty. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you, I mean, I, I don't think you're going to lie. I don't think you're going to even try to sell that lie with all of that you have gone through. Why would you even want to tell a lie that somebody stole money from you? You said that at times, you know, when she would go and purchase um, items for you guys, she wouldn't return you guys change. Yeah. That, 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 was the that was the main thing. We were just saying, cause she was saying, Oh, I bought the food. I bought, I did buy it. We were like, what's, give us the receipt. What's the receipt? No receipt. Well, it depends upon where she go to buy the stuff, though. Not every shop in Jamaica would give you a receipt. That much I can say. Not, on a serious note, she might go to a corner shop. She wouldn't right. probably go to a supermarket. And Jamaicans, they don't really keep receipt. They might get the receipt and they throw it out. Honestly. So I'm not going to say she, she deliberately kept the receipt from you guys. But mm -hmm. if this is a regular place that is rented to Airbnb um, you know, customers mm -hmm. or, or guests and they're tourists, it should be customary that the owner have them present the receipt to mm -hmm. the guests. Because the they're going to see what their money have been spent on and how much money was spent and so you would get back the change because but let me be clear go ahead go ahead we didn't we wouldn't have known anything about this it is kevin who told us this you understand it is kevin that showed up that day and said hey how much did y'all give the maid that he brought the situation to our faces we didn't know we would have went in there and saw Whatever food was it, we would have never known because we don't how know how far, we don't know how far three hundred and sixty dollars goes on food in Jamaica. We don't know. We would have never known. He pointed that out he, and fired her. He did that. Wow. We would have never known. And listen, and, and let me tell you something. I'm a very forgiving person. Let's just say I I truly and this is I don't know if this is right or wrong, but I can forgive you pocketing a little bit saying they gave me 360 i'm only gonna spend 300 i'm gonna keep the 60 i can forgive that 
I truly can forgive that. I have a problem with the the way she acted when she got caught after the right. fact. You right. know, because right. even in the video, in the very beginning of my video, it is me crying to her saying, we loved you. We liked you. You know what I'm saying? So has mm -hmm. she just been like, you know what? You're right. I, I kept a little extra. You know, I, I don't believe in judging a person as a whole because of one act. So if she was just somebody who wanted to get over on, on tourists every now and then and pocket an extra 50 or extra 60, that... <laughs> okay. My bad. Sorry. Okay. Even I was that, trying to find the I was trying to find the clip where she was hugging you, but it's, it's in the mind. very beginning of the video. Um, yeah. it's in never the very mind. Beginning. I mean, all yeah. viewers can go back and check you out on Facebook, but I'll have you um, mention that when we okay. finish up with the interview. All right, let's let's go to the police report. You went there two days after they came to the house and did nothing. Why did you go back to the police station after that? Because I was talking to somebody, I don't know who it was, and they were like, you didn't get a physical report? <laughs> you know, everything was so overwhelming and such an uproar. No, I walked out of the police station without a physical report. Let's just be clear. So I, I felt stupid for doing that. And I was like, oh, we were leaving that day. So now we're on the 26th. This is two days after we, um, you know, got moved. And so I go back. I have the driver take me back to the police station before we go to the airport. And I walk in, same guys, thank God. And they were like, uh, who are you? I'm like, you don't remember me from uh, two days ago when I got chained in the house with my family and came down here? Y'all, what, what are you talking about? What? Hello? You, excuse me. I mean, I really had to act just like that. I had to say, excuse me. What are you talking about? You don't remember. I was just here. Remember the huge incident, the big incident that where you had to go back to the property, you know? So eventually they couldn't deny it because I just wasn't going to give up. I'm like, this is ridiculous. What are you talking about? I need a police report. What's your name? What's your badge number? I need, and, I, and I only know that because my friend from Jamaica was like, get the badge number, get this. They were telling me what I needed to get and what I needed to say and to ask for the, the officer on duty. You know, I had somebody was kind of telling me, like, this is what you do. This is what you go in there because it's ridiculous. You came out of there without a report. So that's what I did. He opens this big book, which is the book where you write down the reports. Right. And he's acting like he's looking for the incident. OK, he's like, mm, it's not there. OK, so I'm right there. So I'm like, where is it? You know, where you didn't write this down. You didn't write this that women and kids get chained in the property. I mean, really, he's like looking, scanning the book. Like, cause it's kind of so big. Were, they didn't log this in the it book, in the incident log. report book? At all. Are you serious? How do you have a situation where women, children, and babies have complained about being chained in a property? You actually talk to the person and you get in the car and drive over there. That and it was the same. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This it wasn't was a safety. different Absolutely. officer. It was the same officer yes, who had to leave the station, yes, drive on this dark road, yes, took was. you to the property, speak with Mr. Smith just two days prior. To yeah. you going back there and he's acting as if he knows nothing of the sort? It, it was right. Like he didn't see me. He Sabrina, didn't you're me. lying. Sabrina, <laughs> you're lying. Stop lying. <laughs> you're lying. I mean, it's ridiculous. You know what? And I thank God. Everybody's like, oh, she loud. She ghetto. She got a lot. If I wasn't loud and this way and aggressive, I would have been. Them people would have stood there and act like they never seen me a day in my life. Because that's exactly how they were. I mean, first of all, I told you when I walked in initially, they were like nonchalant, like, what you need? You say, what happened now? Mm, really? Okay. Who are you? What you do? Mm, really? Okay. Who are you? What you do? You know, if I wasn't the personality that I wasn't the personality that I am, they would not have. Get and then you see what he did finally give me. So he, they, there is no report. What I have that you see on the video is that little white piece of paper that I insisted on getting that has no information. It just has Officer Anderson uh, badge number. I mean, um, the officer's badge number, sorry. And uh, yeah, that that's it. Now, even in the incident, nature of report, it says dispute, 
report dispute. It doesn't say eight women and children <laughs> were locked and chained in the building. It doesn't say none of that. But I, that's all they would give me. So that was what I was forced to leave with. And I was feeling kind of grateful that I at least got that. You know, at least it gave me the badge number and the name of the officer. So, so hold on. Just mm -hmm. that little piece. Because what I'm looking at now, mm -hmm. the nature of report is just report dispute. forward slash mm -hmm. dispute. That's, that's it. it. That's it. And he just gave you this piece of paper. That's it. But there's probably no record of this. There is no record. There there's was probably no record. record of this either. He he just wrote you something oh. just to appease you and say, hey, go on about your business because you ain't coming back to Jamaica. That's exactly. We That's don't have to worry about you coming back to Jamaica because Mr. Smith has already paid us off. Right. I mean, it, I didn't think that then. I didn't understand. I wasn't connecting all those dots then because in any country, I've traveled to many countries, you assume that the police are on your side and they're to protect you. You know, I in no way in that moment felt like wait this is they're conspiring against me they working against me you know because I, I just didn't get it oh oh this is major right this is major this is major oh i'm so glad i didn't forget this because they were acting like they didn't know me i was forced to pull out the video and i said hello this you right remember to and i pulled up the video and showed him himself he said, delete that video right now. You don't have a right to record me without my knowledge. No, but say it how he said it. Say it how he said it. <laughs> he said, delete that video right now. You don't have the right to record me without my knowledge, right? I, I don't know how to speak the way it's written. But that's what happened. So, of course, I'm the smarter. You know, in the iPhone, you can delete it, but it's not really gone. It's, it's in your until you fully go back into that other folder and delete it is there but yeah so he wanted me to delete it delete the footage you know he he didn't even say oh yeah i remember that is me oh yeah now i know who you are he was like delete that video delete that why this all of a sudden he remembered all of a sudden he remembered but he wants you yeah. to delete the video not Absolutely. knowing that when you delete it from your album it goes into the trash and it stays into right. the trash <laughs> yeah. all right all right <laughs> So thank God I didn't delete it. And thank God, you know, people always give me a hard time about filming everything. Had I not filmed this, every part of it, except, you know, they wouldn't let me film when we were uh, got to go in and talk to Kevin after police police were there. If had I not filmed this, nobody would ever believe this happened. Nobody I mean, the, happened. the story, the story sounds really, really <laughs> like it's made up. On a yeah. serious note, I mean, mm -hmm. you were chained in because they wanted to do inspections of the house, right. and he first told the cops that you guys checked out and you owed him money. And I mean, who does that though? I've right. never seen, I mean, I've rented Airbnb before, mm -hmm. and I've never seen a case where, let's say, you owe them money or you might, you know, do whatever, and mm -hmm. they're going to say, Oh, you can't leave until you pay us. Right. First of all, there's no cash hard cash transaction no tangible transaction with cash in hand there was no right. exchange whatsoever it's right. always electronically it's always digital mm -hmm. so always charge the card yeah so that's why i don't buy this story about oh, oh no you know yeah, that, that was just something he came up with off the top of his head because boy, boy. you know i assure you i now i don't think they of course, of course, I didn't anticipate. I didn't know we was gonna have to hop the fence, but I don't think they were prepared for the fact that we've now escaped. So now we're out with the story. You understand? So now mm -hmm. we're out and at the police department. So they had to come up with something. He had to come up with something. And and to be honest, you know, I I remember being frustrated with the cop when he just gave up. He was just like. You know, he just listened a little while, listened, listened. It was two of them. And then he just like, you know, there's no crime here. I'm like, what do you mean there's no crime? It's like, you need to sue the previous owner. That's what he told me. You need to sue the previous owner. It's always. It's always the previous owner. It's the, owner's, it's the previous owner's fault to knowing that she was going to give up the title in a few days, but still happens to rent it out to you guys. And, you know, he had to fire her staff and bring in his staff and because of her they got to conserve on the utilities you know there's no air there's no water and he has to protect his property by chaining the gates in the daytime and in the nighttime for your own safety 
and changing the locks on the door so therefore no Montagonians will break in and try to steal your property. He's such a nice man and he said that his lawyer told him to evict you guys but because of the goodness of his heart and being a great bishop, he's going to let you guys stay. You know when I first heard the video and I hear you keep saying bishop, bishop, bishop I thought you were one of his congregants. I thought you were a member of his church, maybe attached to, you know, the US of A. I didn't know that you were perfect strangers. Yep. Don't know him at all. I th because you were still respectful even after being in the position and in the situation that you find yourself and your family, you were still calling this man Bishop. Yeah, so his charisma still worked. His charisma worked. Let me be clear. I keep hearing people say that, and that is exactly what he has. I don't know if it's a learned behavior, but he is very charismatic. He is very convincing. He has, and, and, and I do now believe that people can learn to manipulate people that way, and they don't even know they're being manipulated. Because, like I said, he made me feel that he was um, doing us a favor and I felt like I was at his mercy because I definitely didn't want to have to find a new place for my friends and my family and my kids to get thrown out after all this money we just spent so he is very very smooth voice like yes and you know but I'm such a great guy and I, I'm I am the royal crown bishop his excellency of this that and the other and you know and I the richest and the youngest preacher in Jamaica and I own a home not far from here. And he even said, I, I'm not mistaken, he even said he had a wife and a child. I, you know, I remember him Never. saying he had a wife. He said he had a wife and a child? He did. I remember him saying he had a wife and a child. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because, you know, everybody else uh, picked up the little um, vibe that he was interested in boys, but I didn't get that from him at first. Because you didn't spend enough time around him. You might have... <laughs> You know, yeah, you know. I didn't get that because that charismaticness, that, that that little smooth voice, it can almost feel like flirting a little bit. You know what oh, I'm saying? Okay. So it can almost feel like flirting. So I didn't feel like he was interested in boys until the boys start reaching out to me, talking about how he had hurt them, how he had abused them sexually. So, I mean, I, I didn't I didn't even know that. My daughter was like, oh, no, yeah, you didn't you didn't get that vibe. But I didn't I didn't get that vibe from him at first. But mm. so hold on, boys, boys actually reached out to you after you made those posts and stuff. After I posted the video to a year ago, February 2020, um, a lot. If you scroll through a lot of the comments, a lot of boys reached out to me, some on Facebook inbox, a lot of boys, at least it was about four, maybe six of them. Let's just say that that reached out, telling their story, telling how he had hurt them and manipulated them and abused them and 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 promised to, you know, do this, that, the other. And I'm, I can't remember. I'd have to go back and reflect, but I remember specifically the boys just like, wow, like, wow. You know, that's so sad though, because it's just because they were loyal. You understand the ones that were there and, and, and all of these young men looked like boys that were 25 and under, maybe 26 and under. Young boys. Young boys. Very, young boys. very, very loyal. Whatever he... Just, I tell you, they take him by the arm and just escort him, just loyal, just his, you know, so. Wow. Wow. Yeah, unfortunate. The thing is, though, he bought the house with the um the furniture and stuff because, hey, why are you going to defend a remote that doesn't belong to you? As a matter of fact, you didn't even get the title yet. Yeah. I so we, we have, we, we're seeing through all of that. We, we're fully understanding that uh, Sabrina, you guys are very, very lucky and I don't I, I can say that I don't think it was anything that, you know, has to do with uh, him trying to secure his property and to make sure that nothing was damaged because there's always a security deposit or just in case you didn't have a security deposit, your account information is on file. Your card is on file. No, it you could have easily done that. Do I feel that. like there was something up. I feel like he just wanted to be the boss. He's a slave driver mm -hmm. and he manipulates everyone that goes around him. And he was trying to do that to you guys. And then he tried to use charismatic witchcraft on you, which is to say, okay, yeah, I will let you guys stay there. I'll get you a cook, a five star this. And right. then he tried to, you know what I mean? show boat on you and to say okay i am his royalty and his excellency and i have so much you know i mean uh you know 
degrees and I'm mm-hmm. the youngest and most, you know, liked yeah. pastor. And it's, it's just a case of bedazzlement. And it's just a case of him trying to sweep you off your feet. Mm-hmm. But he didn't have intentions of dating you. He didn't have intentions of flirting with you. He had other intentions. <laughs> and I say this with a smile, but we can laugh at it now because thank God that you're alive and thank God that your family made it out alive and you guys didn't fall victim to this man because God, he knows how many other persons have fall victim to this horrible monster who a lot of people are now speculating that his death was to silence him in calling names a young man came out and he said that this man used to sell him and other young men to prominent businessmen from montego bay and kingston and he's very liked in corporate that's what his bio says and clearly he's also well liked in certain communities in jamaica when i heard about um his death I just feel, and it's just my opinion, it's just not that much coincidence in the world that all of a sudden this man, you know, it was already disturbing the video that was floating around where he was just sitting there at the police station just, and they're just laughing and joking. This man, you just picked this man up for a massacre that was at his his church and you have no fear of him. He's just sitting here with no handcuffs, no shoes on and y'all just, and all the laughter. Did you hear all the laughter in that video? They're clowning mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, you, you, you mm-hmm. the ark, you know, all that. So that was disturbing in itself because where in the world will you pick somebody up who, whether they are the ones that slash the, he's that one that actually slashed the neck or not, he is the one, he is the person there, you know what I'm saying, who gave the order once again. And you, he's not even at least handcuffed, at least one hand, nothing. Nothing. And, and let's just be honest. What is there to laugh with a person like that about? What is there funny about that? People have died. So I truly, my just opinion, and I could be wrong, is just that put such a bad light on uh, that video. Uh, we were never supposed the to see that. The police force. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that puts such a bad light on the police force. Mm-hmm. And I do believe that now that it, he's caught, he's caught because he was never supposed to be caught, that so many other people that have allowed him to get away with this behavior where he they were in fear of him telling because mm-hmm. why wouldn't he at this point mm-hmm. <laughs> why wouldn't he and 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 this is the thing and let me be clear i don't wish death on anybody okay i don't you know I, we're not god we i don't believe we have i don't wish that death on anybody i personally feel it would have been better for him to be alive and to suffer for what he had done to other people than to be dead that's just the easy way out to me you know, going to prison and suffering, you know, to, would have been a better uh, outcome than for him to be dead. Now, it's just, that's just simple, easy. Now, and everybody else is left to pick up all the damage that he did. He gone, you know, but I do feel that that was just. It's hard to believe that was an accident. That's all I'm gonna say. It's hard. I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah, we're thinking, and I mean, you. I've said this on Monday that mm-hmm. the, there is no other report about the other um, <clears throat> victims oh. of the accident in terms At of all. the white pickup truck and the third vehicle there, because there's supposed to be a third vehicle. You know what, what thing I occupants? noticed? So what about those occupants? I, and. If you notice, because am I correct that he he didn't die on the scene? He died in the hospital. Well, he they said that he died on the scene because I think according to police report, it took them well an eyewitness account. It took them almost an hour to pretty much cut him from the um, mangled vehicle, and um, he, he news broke that he was dead on scene, but he has to be pronounced dead at a hospital officially okay right so he has to be uh officially pronounced dead so therefore the news actually retracted their argument and then they came back out i think 20 minutes or hour later to say yes they can confirm that he died as a result of that accident but it's 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 very fishy how how just how is there no blood are the internal injuries that killed him that, that didn't produce? Even the other officers I hear, because of course there's no pictures of the, the when the, somebody walked up, they saw them bleeding from the mouth. Mm-hmm. How is there no blood 
because if you're battered from the car rack from the inside, that blood comes out. You, you yeah, understand? Yeah. You have no blood. I mean, maybe it's his. Maybe it's his powers. I don't know. Somebody asked on the live though, because I see you mentioned it that he actually put up the property for rental, not on Airbnb but on other websites. Yes. Yes, it is. I went to those too. I, I I tried to tell people in those forums. Yeah, I can't remember it, but I which ones? But yes, he. It was a few other air, not air like Airbnb sites, and he did. He put the property up for rent, and I tried to do everything I could. I went in, as you see. I mean, now everything that I did a year ago is resurfacing. I all of his videos. I tried to go in and, and let everybody know, beware, beware of this person. All these videos, and nobody ever really, um, you know, nothing happened. But now it's all resurfacing. But yeah, he did. He he tried to rent the property many times, but. It seems like now they keep saying that this was his residence, that he was living there. Yeah, I th yeah, I think it become yeah he he moved his in. main residence after a while. So, I mean, because to how the pictures only you can tell us though, because if the if you I think at first when his story broke, they were showing the property and they were showing inside with the furniture. Only you can actually tell us if those um, pieces of furniture that were in the pictures that that came out when the story broke mm -hmm. if it you know they are the same pieces yeah. that you have seen there when you were staying there back in february 2020 same so furniture. i don't know if he took the furniture out and bring new oh, furniture that's the in same couch. that that brown couch that's the same couch so therefore so so you see so he bought the property with everything then because he didn't change out anything at all so this is why a lot of people are saying that he and mrs c could have been in cahoots he and Mrs. C could have been partners in crime. Because what's still puzzling me is why is it that she was so willing to offer you to stay somewhere else and not try to rectify you staying there? Why did she even allow him to fire her staff? Why did she even allow to allow him to, to turn the water off, the heater off, change the locks and change the gates? I, I, I just assume she only had so much control because she was out of town. Maybe if she had I a mean, been in Jamaica... Yeah, but to me, that is... Up. Nah, nah, I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to be very frank with you. I am not going to buy it. If I still own a property, unless, what is it, she was afraid to lose the sale? This man was even talking about her in a very mm -hmm. derogatory way to you. Very bad. That had nothing to do with you. He was dragging her through the mud in the first place. So what is it there? What else is there to lose? That's true. I'm, you know what I mean? So I'm just you know, saying. You know? I think about that a lot because so many people keep saying that to me. But to be honest, we'll never know that. Yeah. We'll never know. I'm just, and, and, and I am I'm just, like, I'm just asking questions that a lot of people are asking. And, right. and I'm yes. playing both I, I hope not. That's all I can say. Because if I'm that poor of a judge of character, my God, you know, because <laughs> I, I, if people can make make you believe that they care and are, you know, have your back, and you never really know that. They were part of it. I, mm -hmm. I just, that's why I just refuse. My heart won't let me accept that she or the driver were part of it. I just, I just don't believe that. And at this point, if they were, they got away with it because, you know, because what, what people are saying is that it, everything was an act. Even the maid stealing our money, they were all working together. Him was him showing up to fire her was all like a plot something they planned out you know mm -hmm. so but but we'll never know and i just i just choose to not believe i don't she was she she was like i said if she was part of it she was a hell of an actor oh that's me getting down in jamaica like i said we had a great time in jamaica that's us part of that i want to i want to <laughs> talk about the good times now we see on video okay. here where is that mm -hmm. your daughter in the yellow top no, no that's uh my friend from belize Okay, okay. So you guys were having the time of your life. It was Jamaica 2020. Mm -hmm. And I mean, throughout all of this, you're still you're still enjoying yourself. You family had a good time. Oh, look at your friend getting it down there. Oh, man. look at it. You weren't playing. <laughs> so would you would you come back to Jamaica? No. For real? Absolutely. Knowing knowing it's just Kevin that made the trip a horrible trip, but wouldn't you try to it come wasn't back? Just, it wasn't Kevin that continued to threaten and harass me after I got home. There were so many Jamaicans that continued to threaten and harass me when I got home. But don't you think now that they understand who this man 
truly is do, do you do you would you still want to come back I just don't think it's necessary I had a great time I photographed it all you know that's us zip lining you know <laughs> uh, we got great memories aside from what we went through so I don't think it would be smart because what I was being accused of was damaging tourism and their money uh, saying that Jamaica depends on the tourist. So this story was damaging tourism. So there might be some people who still feel, especially in light of how Jamaica is damaged now, mm -hmm. you know, there might be some people who feel that this story coming out is still a damage to tourism. True right, or not, right. true or not. Right. Right, right, right. So no, right. I, I mean, it's nothing. New. I, I do not, and I have been consistent in saying that in every last one of my videos, I do not blame Jamaica. I have a very good friend who I love dearly who still lives in Jamaica, you know, but I can't, I won't come back. I, I don't need to come back. There's too much negative energy around this now. You understand? I get you. I, I get you. I feel you. Yeah. I feel you. No, no. I understand. I understand. I mean, I, I was just trying to sell sell Jamaica because I always <laughs> sell Jamaica. But I mean, the greatest thing is that you have documented it and you have videos to look back on. Right. And, you know, despite of what happened, you know, I mean, you say that you still love Jamaica. You enjoyed yourself. You still respect Jamaicans. But let me tell you a little secret. Mm hmm there are a lot of Jamaicans who are very ignorant. There are okay. a lot of Jamaicans who are very gullible. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of Jamaicans who are smart. There are a lot of Jamaicans who are loving. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of Jamaicans who will just run with whatever they hear. And we like to gossip. And I'm not trying to paint a bad picture of Jamaica. You've seen it. Right. A lot of Jamaicans don't like when foreigners bash Jamaicans, when they don't understand the full story. And in mm -hmm. your case, that's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. So because you made your video expressing what happened and expressing how you felt, and you're in no way, shape, or form wrong to do that because you're the one that experienced it. And right. here we are, a year and a few months later, mm -hmm. the true character of Kevin came public. Right. And I'm sure a lot of these Jamaicans who were bashing you, calling you names, threatening mm -hmm. you right now, right. would probably want to come and apologize to you. Mm -hmm. I am not going to apologize on behalf of them because I'm not in their boat. I don't think like them. I don't operate like them. And, and let me be clear. Some have. If in the comments of the videos, of some, some have come back and apologized. And I appreciate everybody That's who has taken the time and come back and apologize. Even, you know, a lot of people didn't see the full video. A lot of people were like, oh, you're just screaming. Oh, you're just dramatic. They said I was dramatic. You're overly dramatic. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. acting a fool mm -hmm. for no reason. You know, you must have mm -hmm. did something. Oh, why was you entangled with this man? You know, a whole mm -hmm. lot of people said things before they watched the video. Yeah, before they we saw love the it. full videos. So, you know, I appreciate every single solitary Jamaican that have apologized to me because there, there have been many. Thank you. I mean, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. I mean, I'm not forcing you to come back. Guys, I'm not forcing her. I'm just, I'm, you know, being the host, I'm just asking her if she would come back after this. You know what I mean? And as somebody said, a friend of, you know, a friend of the uh, of the the show, a viewer says that, um, you know, you're still traumatized and you have to work your way back into the comfort zone to even consider coming back. When you might consider coming back 10 years from now, we don't know. But for now, we will not force you. And we, we're we happy that you had a good time in spite of what happened. And we're happy that you see Jamaicans as a set of loving people. And for those who actually crossed the line with you, we know that you forgive them because it's just based on ignorance. However, the biggest problem and the biggest fear is feeling that the police force does not have your back. Why would you return to a country where you feel like if you get if somebody snatch your purse, you don't have any legal recourse? That's the biggest issue. Feeling like the police do not have your back is why I would not return to Jamaica. All right. So what I want you to do for me, Sabrina, is I see a few people asking where they can watch the actual video on YouTube. You can drop the link right in the comment section so they can click on it. So for the for those of you guys who are asking how you can watch the video in this okay, entire the the right video. Now. 
Yeah, so she's going to drop the link right now so you guys can go back and watch it. I know a lot of people have watched it, <laughs> but I just wanted to have a dialogue with her. I just wanted to have a conversation with her to go in depth, to sit and ask her questions that a lot of people who have been watching these videos might not be able to ask her because it's just a video. So thank you guys so much for stopping by. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for your comments. And Sabrina, thank you for reaching back out. Thank you so much for giving me My your time. Pleasure. I know when I contacted you, you were busy in Disney. <laughs> yes. Um, with your family. Having like, a birthday I celebration. Yes, birthday, yes. Right. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I, I see your good friend, Natalie, saying, and they you can do. read it for yourself. Yes. Natalie, yes. No, Natalie says, choose a hotel next time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, school. So thank you so much and walk good and take care. And we'll keep in touch. We'll definitely keep in touch. Definitely. Thank you. All right, cool. No problem, ma'am. All right. Thank you so much. All right. So that was our very special guest for tonight. We've come to the end of another exclusive. Fast Views Live, we do it like this, usually on a Saturday. But since the start of this big Netflix series, this Jamaica is not a real place. Jamaica is um, crazy. Jamaica is, uh, boy, I may I tell you, Jamaica becomes this big, big production country, film production company. Trust me, people, I've never seen this. Only Hollywood would make up these stories. And they're fake stories. So, guys... Y'all can send me and hit that follow button, hit that friend request button, just in case you're not following me. And thank you, guys. Thanks to the loyal peeps. Always stop by. Thank you so much, guys, for sharing. And I thank you. Thank you so much. And guess what? Before you go, guys, I have another hot episode dropping this Saturday. It's about pastors who enslave their congregants and call them armor bearers. I have two females who were enslaved by their pastors. Not one pastor, but more than one pastor have enslaved them. Have them washing them clothes. Have them cooking them dinner. Have them cleaning them house and saying it is, it is all in worship of God. So that's an interview that y'all don't want to miss. It's coming up this Saturday, same time, 7 p.m. Jamaica, 8 p.m. U.S. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much. You don't know the final roll call. The final roll call. Boy, there's so many people that I want to big up right now. Natalie, big up yourself. Anthony, big up yourself. Maurice, big up yourself. Missy, big respect. Um, Kerry, Kid Jackson, big respect. And thank you so much. Avram, thank you so much. Queen Shark, I see you in the building. Thank you guys so much. Nadine, big respect. Delmarine, thank you. Um, Marshall, Imhotep, Claudette, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Delroy, I see you're probably just checking in, but we're about to close. Veronica, thank you so much. Christine, thank you. Jason, uh, sorry, John. Big respect. Done it. Thank you guys so much for um, tuning in. Thank you for your uh, comments and thank you for your feedback. Winsome. Thank you so much. Um, Johnson. Thank you so much guys for stopping by and dropping in your comment. Carla, I see you. If I'm missing anybody, Debisha, thank you. Shalom to you as well. Genie Sweetness, of course, you don't know. Love you, love you, sis. Thank you so much. Um, Diane, thank you so much guys for watching. I always give everybody them big ups. Try not to leave people out but if i miss your name hey next time just send me a you know a thumbs up or a comment or whatever peace see y'all on saturday remember church start 7 p.m jamaica 8 p.m um in 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 the u.s thank you guys so much we have for the crew we want to say thank you sabrina everybody thank you guys so much peace and have a great evening i'm out i'm out i'm out <laughs>